Broker IPTV. Hello, my name is Mark Eibner. Welcome to Broker IPTV, another production of IPTV Boys Media. And today, once again, we're with Ed Kohler. Ed is with Haystack and Anito and also the author of Technology Evangelist. And Ed, welcome to the show. Hi, Mark. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. As usual with our Friday afternoon talk, we're going to kind of brief, bring up a brief subject for our viewers out there, trying to keep our subject matter under three minutes. Today we're going to talk about, or you wanted to talk about, syndicating listings to sites like Trillia, Craigslist, et cetera. Do you think that's a good idea, Ed? Well, I think it's something that uh, a lot of people are trying to figure out how to navigate these waters, where I think it's it's a... Uh, you, it's a way to get some free traffic to your site, but there may be some hidden costs or some uh, that people need to at least understand. Uh, you know, as far as what's a playing field of syndication today. Um, what do you mean by hidden costs? Uh, well, for example, if you know, just just to make sure everyone understands, what syndication is first is where if you're an agent or a broker, you can push your inventory to sites like Trulia or Zillow or uh, Craigslist in some ways. Um, if you do that. One of the costs can be um, a lot of these sites have what, what's called a freemium service where they have a free level, but then they from there have a lot of step up levels where if you want to have your logo appear there or exactly how the information is presented on the site, uh, some of those are uh, involves monthly fees to the site. Uh, so, uh, you know, you have to think about that stuff before you push your content out there. Yeah, you talk, I guess List Hub would be a point two, and List Hub are two products I can think of that do the syndication out of uh, MLS systems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are two very popular ones. Uh, along the line of uh, programs like that, uh, another consideration is if your listing is pushed out to Trulia or some site like that, right. if people click back to the original site, which site is it that they go back to? Are they going back to a point two version of your listing? Are they going back to a list hub version of the listing? Maybe your board has a website and people end up there. Or you have your own website, do people end up there? There's a lot of different places where, uh, say, Trulia could send people. So, um, you know, in most cases, I think an agent or a broker is going to have the best chance of eventually closing that lead or that, you know, turning that visitor into a lead if they get them to their own website. Um, so it's it's worth understanding how these programs are, uh, you know, designed so that you're right. getting what you're expecting to get. So I think good lesson here is people should trace all their listings through these different syndication portals. Yeah, understand that, you know, if, if they're giving you something for free, there's probably a reason why, you know, there's value in them having access to your data and being able to push that data out. So in a lot of cases, they know that just a, a large enough percentage, and doesn't even have to be a very large percentage, but a large enough percentage of people will be willing to upgrade to some sort of a premium service. So um, if you don't upgrade, of course, when your listing appears on some of these other websites, you may not look as good as some of your competitors, you know. So you're kind of in a position where if you're going to be on Trulia or if you're going to be on Zillow, you may as well look well, uh, you know, because yeah. what happens if a, your seller goes and looks at their listing on all these websites and your listings a dog. in comparison don't look that good? It's a dog, no photos, and the link's going over to some Remax office. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think? Do sellers expect this? Are sellers even cognizant of this syndication? I, I, yeah, I, th I think it's still pretty early uh, for a lot of this stuff. I, I think uh, sellers do understand Craigslist today, and uh, a lot of sellers will actually take their own listing and create an ad even you know, without the knowledge of uh, their agent <laughs> over on Craigslist. But uh, Trulia and Zillow, while they have been around for a while and, of course, very well known among real estate professionals, uh, you know, when I talk to people about sites like Trulia and Zillow who aren't in the industry, it's right. still a foreign concept to them. So oh, interesting. Well, um, I've, I've noticed I, Zillow's. To me, Zillow's kind of dropped off the map. I don't even hear about them anymore. They don't have the buzz they had before, but they're still doing quite well, I think. Yeah. What about do you, where do where do realtor listings really belong then, Ed? Well, I think uh, you know every. Every broker, every real estate agent needs to make up their own mind about where listings go. Everyone has their own strategies for marketing their uh, their businesses. So um, my advice is to wherever you're going to put your listings, make sure you look good. So be professional at whatever it is that you do. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Yeah, right. Keep your personal and company brand up. Hey, Ed, been great talking with you again. Syndication of listings, very critical, I think, to uh, any broker's success in the future. Appreciate you being with us today. Thanks, Mark. And we will see you next Friday. 
And so for more great information, make sure to keep your browser on Broker IP TV. Find more real estate videos at BrokerIPTV.com.